All right. So we come down just a touch. There we go. There we go. Zoom in just a little bit for the YouTube crew. Come down right there. That's going to be perfect. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the show. <clears throat> How you doing? As you can see, all my friends, my gorgeous friends out there, thank you all for tuning in, friends. I love you all. Now, let's come in here with our Bob Ross Liquid Clear and get all of this clear covered onto our little canvas board. Our little board type deal that we took and painted with acrylic black gesso. You want to know what that looks like? This is what it looked like. Liquitex acrylic black gesso. Now, cover the entire thing. And then I made the moon using black gesso and white gesso. Right? You can get both of these at Michael's or on Amazon or whatever. And if you want to know how to make the moon, I have a YouTube video, 15 minutes long, step by step, literally every step. And uh, you can go check that out on my YouTube page. So, as we get our little board covered in the clear, you can see it starts getting darker and darker and darker the more wet it gets versus its dry state, right? You need to have it nice and wet in order for it to slide all across the canvas and have all of our colors blend together and move easily. Otherwise, we'd have to work this hard in order to get our blue or our white snow or whatever you were trying to paint off of your brush and onto the canvas. You can see how hard you have to work just to get this clear onto there. But then once the clear's on, boy, oh boy, it's like a slip and slide. You guys remember slip and slides? You might be too young or you might be too old. Slip and slides, man, the best, just like five, $10 thing you can have for your backyard, throw a hose on it, you're all good to go, right? Now, once we get it all wet, you can see it's very reflective, right? All of the, you can follow my reflection literally in the wet paint. And so we gotta take a couple paper towels. I like using the Viva brand. It's not a paid promotion, I'm just saying. I've used a few different brands. And Viva, I find, is the, the best one that doesn't leave so many little bits, right? Now, if your canvas is really rough, of course you're gonna drag off some bits of your paper towel. But if you've got a nice smooth board like this, you can literally push with a lot of pressure, bang, get all that excess clear to come off and we'll be ready to go. So I put my red light on in the background today because I figured we'd do like a reddish kind of trippy apocalyptic kind of scene, right? So in order to do that, we're going to need to clean our brush off. So we're gonna dip it into our thinner, shake it into a can, and then into the old beater bucket. Then you just beat the crap out of that old brush. Comes out nice and clean, right? So, I'll show you a little bit later on what the bucket looks like, and then we're gonna dab off all the excess thinner and the color, anything else that remains in the brush, and get it off, and that way your brush isn't soaking wet, right? If you get a couple little streaks, totally fine. That's exactly what you wanna have, because it's gonna help our paints kind of blend and slide all over the place. Now, on the Friday night and Monday night shows, I like to show you literally every single step. So we're gonna get our Windsor and Newton, excuse me, a Lizarin Crimson, only because I ran out of the Bob Ross one and then I wanted it immediately and I didn't want to wait, so I went to the store and bam, got some Crimson, right? Take that, take our Windsor and Newton White, again, didn't want to wait for the other one, so we went and got the Windsor and Newton's, it's just exactly the same as the Bob Ross colors, right? Their, their Alizarin Crimson is a little bit more wet, just a teeny, teeny, teeny little bit more wet than the, uh, than the Bob Ross Crimson is. But every manufacturer is like that. You're gonna get colors, some colors come out really oily, some colors come out really thick, and then same color in a different brand might be opposite, might be oily, or could be super thick as well, you know what I mean? All depends, we're gonna get our mountain mixture out for this guy. It's, it's very much like the black. I use it just like the midnight black. And uh, we're gonna use that as our dark for our black today. Bingo, bango. You can use ivory black. Don't use the mead and lamp black though. That mead and lamp black, that will overtake all of your other colors and you won't see a thing beyond that black because it is super black, right? Let's come over here, a little bit of our blue. I like to use that mead and black for like tree limbs or very fine, far away dark lines. Now, I think with the red, I think we should be all set. All right, 
let's come in here. Let me show you the colors that we've got for today. So we've got a, you know what, we we'll probably need to get more brown out, but we'll get it out later. We've got our bright red, our cad yellow, a thalo blue, a lizard and crimson mountain mix, or the midnight black, and uh, our titanium white. We'll probably also use the dark sienna brown, if you're keeping track, and maybe the Indian yellow, maybe, a little bit. Probably not, but maybe. All right, now, what we want to do with our wet canvas is, first, check in, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? You gotta let me know what it is. And if you want to get the brand new shirts, I arted too hard and ruined my paints. <laughs> They're over there in my Etsy store. So, let's come over here, grab a little bit of our bright red, a little bit of our crimson together on the brush so it's not overly red or overly crimson-y on our brush, right? A little of the red, a little of the crimson. Then we're gonna come out, and let's say especially out here, we wanna load up that explosion with a bit of dark color, right? The more that you put into that dark part of your moon, it instantly starts to look like everything's on fire, right? Now we'll come down here, then we'll leave a little bit of back ocean for our ourself, just a little line of that reddish crimsony color, and then as we come through, it's all gonna be reddish and crimsony, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Right now, up into our sky, again, a little bit more of our red, a little bit more of our crimson. A little squeak of that brown. Oh, there it is. We can get that brown to come out. Boy, oh boy. Come out into here, we'll have this dusky sort of sky. And you can see I just nicked my moon just a little bit. And that's okay. We can come back and literally wipe it off. Have it go back to white. Just like that. Back in here, over there. Sometimes the brush is a little bigger than you think it is, ladies. Two inches is big. Try doing your makeup with this sucker, right? <laughs> that turns into a quite a large brush. Quite a large measurement there. No, I had a, I had a follower one time say, finally, someone said two inches was big. And ever since then, every time I talk about the two-inch brush, I gotta bring it up, because that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard to that point in my life. Two inches is big, look at that. <laughs> so, now, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get rid of that little bit. Since our canvas is covered in clear paint, right? It's all wet. And our moon was already pre-done in white acrylic. You can literally come around the edge and anywhere that you grabbed up any bit of color, boom, 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 zip, wipe it away. Bam, it's all right there, right? It'll all come off if you want your moon to be bright white. If not, you can always overdo, like you can have it come over, but in this case, with the exploding moons, I like them to be colorful on that side and then kind of bright white on the other side, right? So we're gonna get all of our little explosion bits going out like that. And then we'll go back and brighten this up with some yellow and stuff. Now, over back to over here, a little bit of our crimson, a little more red than crimson this time because I want the eye of the wave to be super bright, right? So we're gonna come in and crash. Let's, let's not do any back bits. Let's just throw our eye right there and then we'll have a whole lot of crashing spray we can put some rocks very light on my pressure back here we don't want the colors to be exactly the same right come up into that back bit and we'll have our wave kind of crashing over up above the horizon even it's gonna be really cool very lightly gonna pull off to the side so it's darker here than it is down here in my bright area then we're gonna go back and get a little bit of our brown and a little touch of our black just a little bit a little bit of the black, just to darken it down. Then we'll take that brownish color, throw that down in here, down on our beach. A little bit of browniness on the beach. We have our beachy sand down here. Life's a beach, man. Have fun with it, right? Let's come over here. Over there, over here. Just getting our dark color everywhere. That's all you gotta do. And then we'll come back and brighten everything up and it'll go so fast that you won't even know what came in and hit you. A little bit of our brownish crimson underneath that red bit. Maybe a little back there just to darken it down and have a little different color. And now we're going to have a really cool little seascape back here. Maybe we'll throw some big old rocks onto the side. It'll be really fun. Up into the sky, you can see the sky is a bit darker, especially than our bright area you want it to be. You don't want all the colors to be the same, right? Now let's take that old brush. It's all nasty. It's got the black, it's got the brown, it's got the crimson, it's got the red all in there. We've got to wash that out. Now, since we like to show you every step, I save this part. I was gonna do it off screen, and then I was like, everyone wants to see literally everything. So, odorless mineral spirits, that's the stuff that we use. I get it over at uh, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, 
and they recently dropped the price. It was like 17 bucks a gallon. This one's nearly empty. That's the only reason why I'm pouring it like this. Otherwise, if it's too full and it glugs, pour it like this, right? And then you get all the air out and it doesn't glug. But when it's nearly empty, you can just pour it like a regular thing. But they, uh, they lowered the price from like $17 to $9.99. I was like, oh man. So I loaded up on two, uh, two gallons. Now this one's nearly empty. So, I'm going to put this off to the side and get back to painting. Everyone loves the painting. Got to do the painting, Josh. Get to the painting, okay? Now, first thing, we're going to come in here. I almost overfilled it. It's very high up at the top, so we're just going to dip it in just a little bit. And you can see how much runs out. Ooh, nasty, right? And then we're going to try to keep it contained inside of our cup, spin out any excess bits that we don't want to fall onto our carpet, right? And now, we shake it over here. Into the can. It's almost like you're like you're gonna whip somebody with a towel. <laughs> whip it into a can, and then you go into your old beater bucket. Now my beater bucket is really full and really gross and really nasty, but it's just a golf ball basket down in the bottom of a five-gallon bucket, and that gives me a lot of surfaces back and forth that I can beat the devil out of the brush. Now, since we're all prepped and ready to go for this exploding moon seascape, you gotta tell me where you're watching from and just what's your favorite brush. To use. What's your favorite brush? Out of any brush you've ever used before, what's your favorite brush? The go-to brush, the one that you can't do anything without. What is that gonna be, you guys? And if you wonder why, hmm. We're so jacked because Friday nights is freestyles two hours earlier, guys. Starting two hours earlier than normal. And Josh is wired beyond all belief. Now, let's come up here. Let's say we really wanted to first brighten up our explosive bit. I'm not just going to go into the white paint. We're going to grab some of that cadmium yellow as well. And the cad yellow will really brighten it up. And just with a little bit onto our brush, we can come up here and just kind of save a bit of the darkness. That's why I didn't go all the way to the edge with the bright. Save a bit of that black and that kind of acts as the rim of our exploding moon, planet, whatever it is. So we'll take our yellow up in here and just mush on a little bit. Poosh! Bang! All of a sudden, it looks like instantly this explosive bit. So then we come up with our one-inch brush and we start to grab it and pa pow Just explode it out as far as you want into your sky just with that pressure. We get to decide what it looks like just based off of our pressure. Right? We'll come out here and do a little bit more white, a little bit more yellow. Come over here. Remember, guys, this one is available in my Etsy store. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Maybe we had some, just some crazy things coming out of this one. All right, take it. You can mix it. You can blend it. You can go back. You can go forward. You can push it out. Oh, just as soft as you want it to be. Ejecting and lighting up all of our little pieces of the moon that flew outwards, right? Just really cool. Now, come in here with the same brush. And let's go a little bit of white, a little touch of yellow, just a little bit. We've already got our red out here in the sky, right? So we have the same kind of color. If you come in with that cad yellow against the red and crimsony bit, you don't want to go up too high. Let's do, let's do a crazy, okay, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. We're going to come in here like this. And just go, ba -ba! all over, sticking underneath the moon. Sure, you can come up and touch it if you want, just a little bit. Boom! Like that, take these guys. It's very cool to give a couple of them just a little streaky action. And you'll see when you blend it out, you get these really neat little looks. All right, so say you came out, made it a little softer, kind of pulled it out in one way, pulled it out the other way, just so it's not that perfect thing. Over here, a little bit more. Streaking it, streaking it, stroking it. Whoop, streaking it. Hello, over here. Back and forth, grab that color. Mix it up as much as you want. Boom. A little bit of funky color out there. Just some craziness. And if you don't like the streaks, boom, make them go away. Wiggle across. Now it looks like, like, like uh, Poseidon's trident. Bang, right? There we go. I like that a little bit better. Again, just proves that you can work it and work it and work it until you like how it looks. Back over here. Back down there. Wiggle and push a little harder. Maybe we drag some of this color and we pull it. We stretch it. Get it real thin, way back on our horizon. You get these soft little puffs of clouds out there in the distance, guys. Oh, yes. Oh, Nelly. 
Man, this one's looking cool. So, since we had to blend our clouds so far up here and they became very faint, why don't we come in with a little bit more of our white? Little grab, just a little squeeb. We'll squeeze that bright yellow, and then we come in over the tip top of those guys again. A little bit more paint, right? Not trying to make them look exactly the same. Almost trying to have this cloud stand out as being in front of the other farther off, softer bit of color back there, right? And the more we mix it up, the more it starts to blend away. And then we get to decide what that looks like, where it stops, what happens. Come back, mix it up, over here, over there. Right, much brighter now. Oh, I like that better. I like it. Right now, say you want to come in and shadow it in places. Come in with a little bit of that brownish color. Ooh, we picked up a... That was totally accidental, but I don't hate it. <laughs> but we're going to get rid of it anyway. So, accidentally got into my phthalo green when I went to try to grab my brown. And now it's on my brush pretty good. There we go. A little bit of the brown. Mix that guy down over here. Get rid of our little green spouts. This is not a green painting, Josh. The more and more and more you mix them up, the more brown it will go, especially since we're mixing it with literal brown paint. Right? Now, let's come over and since this was a mistake, I'm gonna force your eyes to look right at that mistake. Just by doing this, taking a little bit of our same color, a little white, a little yellow. And now this is gonna force your eyeballs. To look at my mistake, I'm not shying away from it. We accidentally added some green in there where the green shouldn't have been. Got onto my brush. Totally accidental, right? And that's what happens. But instead of shying away and trying to cover it, I'm gonna make you look at it. I'm gonna put something out here that forces your eye to look right at that spot, right? So in order to hide my little guy just a touch, I'm gonna come in with a few more clouds in front of him. Over here, bingo, bango, just like that. Right? Come down and mix those guys down. There are no mistakes, right? It's literally, the, 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 Bob was right. It's literally just a little accident. And it turns out that most of the time, you can take your little accidents and turn them into something cool just out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Just with nothing. A little nothing. <laughs> now, let's come in, wipe off that brush one more time. So now we got a kind of very muted color. We'll come back in here, light up at the white. And whatever little yellow is in there is good enough. I don't want it to be exactly the same color as we have out here, so we're not going to add the yellow color to our seascape. Right now, back underneath our clouds, you can see how they get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker, right? Start out real bright, and they get dark. You don't want to start your seascape way up here in the bright part of the clouds. Otherwise, you won't be able to tell what's water and what's cloud, right? You bring it down until there's just about a little line of darkness, and it doesn't have to be straight, right? The clouds don't have to be straight. Uh, well, your line has to be straight, but your dark section doesn't have to be straight, is what I'm saying. Now, we'll come over here like this, hold it, drop a little line off in the distance, and now you got your far away uh, horizon off there, right? Take any little bit that our ruler or yardstick kind of messed up in our clouds. Now, all we need to do is come into here and light up a little section, very light, lightly, right? The more we streak across, the more of our red and brown color is going to interact like we had it out there. A little bit out there in the distance. Okay, and then we're going to come in with our same brush. Haven't washed it, just keep dabbing it on a paper towel, literally like that. You hit it onto a paper towel, it removes most of the color because you don't need all of it, right? You want to have all that color on the brush, but it's nice to have a little. We'll come back over here and we'll start to stretch it out. The more we go, the more straight those streaks you can get. Pushes it underneath the cloud back there. Looks like our clouds are rolling out over our ocean, right? Very, very cool. Remember, guys, this one is available for sale. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, and we're using oil paints here. All right, we love oil paints exclusively. Don't use any other paint. Well, I used acrylic to make the moon. But majoritively, let's say, we use oil paints. Okay, now let's come in here. I think we do have room enough for one little mustache. Do you know what I mean by a mustache? We're gonna to switch to a much smaller brush, by the way. Much smaller brush, because we're on a smaller little space back here. So, by tossing in one little mustachey bit, it's gonna give ourselves a place to feed our big wave back to. You wanna have a little peak of darkness underneath your bright. That's what's gonna focus the eye and make it look like our wave's going whoop, whoop, and <laughs> just like when we were kids. You know what I mean? You paint those little waves, or used to 
when I was wanted to paint water, I would draw it like this, a little dip, 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 and it would go up like that, right? Now we're going to switch back to our bigger brush, since we're going to focus on our big wave here. And we're going to load it up, not overly load it. Remember, on a black canvas, you use much less paint on the brush because it shines so much more brightly on black canvas versus white canvas, right? So a little bit of paint. Let's say right above our eye, take our big guy, he's going to come down just like this. Right above that brightness of our eye, okay? Now we're going to imagine all of our big old splashing monster, crashing massive wave is going to fly up onto this side. And then we'll have all of our eye inside that bright reddish part, just like I said we would, okay? Again, a little bit of uh, paint onto the brush. And we're going to come off the back of this guy. We might actually change his... There we go. Come up like that. And flow over. Okay, off the back of him, we're going to drag off little streaks. Now, these little streaks are very important. They need to match the angle of our water, right? So the further that we get out over to the side, the more you start going straight. And then you can even start dipping down if you wanted to. Just like that, right? Around our little pivot point that we call it right there, that little spot where you finally get to it. And you go, ooh, now i got to stick at that spot and go around, 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 all the way down. It's going to help our wave start to shape itself. Okay, we go back in here. And with a little bit more paint on the brush, I'm going to come over here, touch, and then rotate over. Just like we're throwing it down to the bottom corner of our canvas down here. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. The more you do, the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it gets. And you can have your wave go across and look like that the entire stretch. Dang, just have this one wave kind of rolling back. But I like to rotate my brush, save a little piece of darkness back in here, and then flick out another little section, right? Because in my mind, the wave has already crashed back behind where we're painting. We're just seeing the first bit of its rotation as it falls over. All right, so again, we come back here and we use that little pivot point, right, right over there, and then you come out, and you come back to the same spot, go a little bit lower, same spot, a little bit lower, same spot, a little bit lower, rotating that angle of the brush. Our, the, the end over here is getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher each time we start. All right, so first it was over here where you couldn't see it, and then it's here, and then it's here, and it's here, just like a clock, you go around, except we're going counterclockwise, right? Go a little bit lower, a little lower, a little lower, a little lower, right, a little lower, a little lower, just starting and each time turning our handle until we come up to our big guy, which is right in the front. Now we can push this guy back, rotate down, dragging it, dragging it. You start making this little heart shape of a wave, which ends up looking really cool, if you ask me. And it's cute. Valentine's Day is coming up. Got to get something for your girl, right? What are you going to get? A gorgeous little heart-shaped wave for her. Now we're going to come back in with the same brush. Go back into the light start to brighten it up. Now, we don't want our two white colors to touch. So even though it's bright red, it's still a dark separator, right? Because it's keeping our two bright areas from touching. And you can drag a little of that white back in here, and a little of it down, down. The more that we're pushing on it, the more it's going to drag it down. It's going to make it kind of dull itself down. And then we're going to imagine it flowing down into this wave. So the water's going to come up. Boom, 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 up into the wave like that, right? All from our one little starting point that's going to be over here. And we'll show you that. How about right now? <laughs> we'll show you that right now. We're going to come in here with our white. And let's say all of our water came down and splash, boom, hit the ground right here. So we can imagine, maybe a little bit, and it'll be scrolling back and scrolling back and scrolling back and scrolling back, however far it wants to go. All the way back out that way, right? We also have to think maybe our wave, which is only connected really in this one spot, is going to come down and line up with our little bit of our guys going back, right? So now we kind of have an idea on where we want to place everything. So we take this guy, we pull it off in a different direction, turning it around, covering up those little guys. So just there is like a sketch, right? Leave your dark separator big on this little bit of weight, because the more that you push on it with our other brush, the more it's gonna shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. So leave it a little bit bigger than you normally would, right? And that red counts as the dark separator. It's kind of that ridge where it shows one bit of water flowing this way, one bit of water flowing down that way, right? Now we're gonna come back in here, and let's say, let's start out on the edge. You can start in the middle, but I like to show you from the outside in. 
So as we come out here, we're lining up with our wave. It's very, very big. Right? We're, we're pretending like we're making this big circle all the way around. Come in, we'll be a little bit closer. And all the way around, we'll come in, we'll be a little bit closer. And then all the way around, we'll be a little bit closer. And each time we get closer, 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 all the way inside, right? Obviously not touching up around the, <laughs> the sky. We'll come down here with a little bit more paint. And like I said, back out here, we start coming back. And the closer and closer and closer we get, starting from our same point nearly, right? And out here, everything starts to come down and line up right out here to the bit, right? So we're starting out here, sliding it back, and each time getting more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and more rotation in there, right? Until very lightly on our hand when we get deep inside of the barrel, you get very light touch. You can get those little differences in color. Now, let's pretend we had this guy and extended him, and he came out here, and then all of a sudden, this bit of wave turned. We can have a whole other bit, this guy going off in the opposite direction again, leaving our little dark separator. So now, we'll have wave, and our, our little thing's going like this, a little S-shaped curve. That's really cool. Really cool, right? And yours doesn't have to look exactly like this. It doesn't. I say that in my tutorials all the time. It doesn't have to look like this. I'm just giving you a guideline, just giving you ideas, right? If you want your wave to be on the opposite side, take my ideas, flip them around in your head, and do it the opposite way, right? All up to you. Plus, our, le our left-handed viewers might be much easier if your wave was crashing to the other side. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's easier for my right hand to go like this than for my right hand to go like this and make a, an opposite thing when it's much easier to go back and forth on this side, right? So all depends on how much, it, you know, how easy it is for you. But you come in there like that, and all of a sudden we've shaped out our wave out here. We've got all this space for some gorgeous brownish, reddish sand over here. It's going to be freaking awesome. Now, let's come back. Since we got our brush that we haven't washed one time, I just keep dabbing it on a paper towel. Sounds like somebody's knocking at the door, right? But they're not. But trust me, nobody comes and visits me. It's fine. We'll come down like that, a little bit over to the edge. It's just softening the paint. Coming back in here, very soft very soft because every time we touch it it scoots a little bit closer to that bit of darkness right we don't want that we want it to stay very dark back there very dark you can't allow those two bits of white paint or pink in this instance because it's on red right in any case whatever color is yours you don't want the two colors to touch you got to have a separation in there okay and then we can come in here with our brush kind of grab it at the top right and imagine we come sliding down our way you get to shape it however you want it to look. All right, back in there. Now, once we get into here, I don't want to leave any brush marks in my eyes. So I start coming from the opposite direction. Starting from the bottom, dragging it up this way, up that way, boom, 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 boom. Leave this rotation in there. All right, over here, over there. Now, let's get into our sandy bit, guys. This is going to be really fun, especially on this crazily shaped wave like that, right? So I'm going to tell you how to make the sand. And then I'm going to ask you some questions, right? And I want you to answer me along the way. Type it into the comments. I can read them in real time. Type them into the comments, right? What are we going to do as far as making our sand? About how much are we going to go underneath? How far are we going to go underneath our sand in order to leave a good little gap? Does anybody know? Anybody know the distance? Make sure if you're, if you're watching over on YouTube, you give me a, a, a thumbs up over there. Gotta have thumbs ups. The more thumbs ups we get, the more people will end up coming to watch. It's all correlated. You guys know it's about a quarter inch. About a quarter inch. So we'll take that bit of white, a little bit more yellow than we ever put in the color, right? So it's mostly yellow, in fact, with a little touch of white. We'll come in here with that yellow, and it's gonna interact onto our brown and our, our um, pinkish, crimsony sand. It'll be a wicked color, right? Look at that. Fire, guys. Just fire. Now, let me know. Does that look like sand? You can be totally honest. I've got 1.8 million followers. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Totally honest with me. Does this look like sand? I'm expecting you to not say yes, right? <laughs> to say literally anything but the word yes. Because to me, it doesn't. It looks horrible. It looks like a... I don't know what it looks like. We don't even know what it looks like. Ah, gotta get this guy out onto the lip. That may make it easier to do our, our deal. All right, so be honest. Does it look like sand? Anybody? 
Anybody out there think it looks like sand? Could possibly look like sand? No, not really. Not yet, says Christina. Right? Anthony Joseph over on, uh, on Facebook says, not yet. Not yet. Do I have a fan blowing to help with the fumes? Good question over on YouTube. I do have a fan underneath my table, right, that's behind me as I stand right here. Since my bucket is right down below me, that fan hits the bucket and blows the fumes away from me. I also have uh, stadium-style lighting in my uh, little spare room here that have fans that are constantly blowing. That's what you can hear in the background, right? You can hear that. That's those fans constantly going. And there's one right underneath my table to help blow away the fumes so I'm not sat over here just huffing my bucket for an hour. I mean, you know, the trailer park sounds like fun, but not during a painting show. We don't know how that would turn out. So I'm going to ask you guys three questions now. Now you've got to answer me, okay? You've got to answer exactly what I want you to say. Now, we're going to do three different things. We're going to pull down on our sand, and then we're going to pull it one way, and we're going to pull it the other way, okay? Or vice versa, pull it this way, and then pull it that way. Now, first things first. When we pull it down, do we use a very light amount of pressure, or do we use a heavy amount of pressure? What are we doing? Light or hard? Who's hard in the audience? Light or hard, anybody? Let's see. TMH says hard. Susie says hard. Airy Fairy says Hulk pressure. Wanda says hard. Mary says light. Conservative Patriot says hard. Light says Anthony over on Facebook. Heavy says Adriano over here on YouTube. All right, so since we got a couple answers going both ways, I'll show you both ways and then we'll see. Everybody who said light pressure, who maybe thought about typing in light versus heavy, right? Would you leave your sand looking just like this and walk away? Because that's light pressure down, light pressure one way, light pressure the other way. Would you leave your sand looking like that and walk away to the next step? And it's totally fine if you would, right? There's no pressure. There's no pressure. That looks very reflective and very cool, very bright, right? And so, so I'm seeing a lot of no's in the comments. Lots and lots of no's. So let's try it the opposite way. Let's go with heavy pressure, right? And see how much further it drags. Now, just for instance, I'm not trying to drag it off the canvas in every place. Maybe on this side, we leave that little dark area and we could sign it down there. Who knows? Maybe it'll get covered by a rock. Who knows? But let's not try to make the sand look exactly the same across the entire bit of sand, right? That's not what we want to do. And again, as close as you can get, underneath every bit of darkness, throw some of that light. Now, does this look like sand? Yes or no is all we need. Yes, no, maybe so, right? Let me know in the comments. And again, we've only done one out of three steps, so you're not gonna hurt my feelings if you say no, it doesn't look like sand. Natalie over here on YouTube says no. Let's see, you GM over on uh, Facebook says yes. Jody says no. Lisa says no over here on YouTube. Looks like a reflection, says Eric William. No, says Blessed Mom over there on TikTok. Not yet, says Cheryl. Valerie Romano says no over here on YouTube, right? Now, I told you, we've only done one out of the three steps. We need to now take it and slide it one way or the other, and then in reverse, one way or the other, right? So here's your next question. This is going to be on the final exam. Do we pull away from the wave first and then tuck it back in? Or do you push it towards the wave first and then tuck it back away, right? So away, towards. What are we going to do first? Away from the wave or towards the wave? All right, looking at it as it sits right now, do we go away or do we go towards the wave? What do you think? What do you think? Let's see if we can get some comments going, guys. Adriana on YouTube says, towards. We got Corey saying towards on TikTok. Loretta says away. Sarah says away. Tony Nichols says away over on YouTube. Man, it's, it must be 2 a.m. In the, in the UK and Tony's still watching. Cheryl says towards, Lisa Riggs on Facebook says away. Valerie over here on YouTube says away. Towards says Lisa Chalier. Chalier, I think I said that right. All right, all right, since we've got both comments, let's think about it, right? We've been talking about these dark separators throughout the entire painting and how you had to save a bit of darkness underneath our clouds, how we had to save a bit of darkness underneath in between the water, how we had to save that little bit of dark in between the eye and the water, right? How we're saving our darkness right here. So would you, wouldn't you think that we'd also be trying to save this dark line? And if you would imagine 
If you push the color towards the wave first, the dark line instantly disappears, right? Push it towards the wave, those bits of color are going to connect, then there won't be any separation. So let's take the same brush, let's pull it away from the wave with heavy pressure, turn all those vertical streaks into horizontal streaks, and now, with them all being horizontal, does that look more like sand, right? Even though we got a funky looking spacing over here, <laughs> that looks much more like sandy beach, right? Very cool. Just a little sandiness, a little sandiness. Very cool, you guys, right? So now, since we have this messed up, chunky, weird looking dark separator right here that's thicker and bigger than any of the other ones, even the clouds. It's bigger and thicker than the, the distance between the clouds and the water. All right, we gotta do that last step. So we pulled down, we pulled away, and then we've gotta sneak it towards, right? It's just that kind of sweeping. We're, 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 we're uh, Snow White cleaning up after the seven dwarfs. We're gonna come in here and sweep up. This place is filthy, what a mess. We come in here and we sweep all that color towards our bit of color, leaving the teeniest, tiniest little violin. No, the teeniest, tiniest little dark separator you've ever seen. Right? Smaller the better. And doesn't that make it look like the wave's got a little bit of height now, right? It sits up a little as it rolls. It's casting its own teeny, tiny little shadow at the bottom of itself as it's rolling back. And this is how you can kind of shape it too. The more you can skirt it back, the more it's going to change the shape of your wave. But be careful, don't turn those bits of sand into bits of wave. That's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Down in here, where it was kind of buried underneath my, my easel, we've got to add a little bit of paint to it. Just a little touch. A little touch. This way, over that way. Bing, bang, boom. And again, trying to keep our dark separator here so you can follow it down and around like the little tail of a snake. That's <laughs> really cool guys. This one's looking really cool. Now one more thing we got to do in order to make our, I mean you can go back in, see how it's kind of changed the color of our sand because we swiped it all across. Kind of changed the whole thing. Right? That, whoop, about fell into the camera over there. That has kind of darkened my sand. So why don't we come back in a little bit of white and a little touch of yellow. Just a little baby bit of yellow like that. And come in here right underneath again, about a quarter inch. And you can brighten up that area. And it's going to make it look like when our wave comes down and splashes that it had a bit brighter spot, right? And again, you get to decide however you want it to look. But pull it down, swipe it away, swipe it back towards the wave, just like we did before. All right, everything over and over and over again. We get to decide what it looks like, you guys. That's very cool. I like that. It's like laying on a golden beach. We gotta call this one Waves Upon Golden Sand or something. I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you guys. So this one. Oh, don't worry. The wave's coming in. Trust. This is what we're about to do, all right? This one's still available for sale, it looks like. And if you go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you can nab it up before anyone else, right? Now, let's come in and grab our three dark colors, just a little bit, right? I've got these gigantic piles on my palette because I do two, three paintings a night, right? So you don't need to have that much paint in order to make a painting like Paint with Josh, right? Even though I've got this giant thing, you don't have to have so much on your palette. Now, what are those three colors that we mix up in order to make a very deep dark crazy deep dark color and i'm going to go through this dark color and load up my fan brush just on the end on both sides as i come back here and try to read some comments let's see uh, astrodome beach that's kind of cool that's kind of cool what are those three dark colors three dark colors guys what are we gonna get right if we mix them up what blue is that? So I'm using a phthalo blue today. You can use Prussian blue or cerulean blue or make up a word blue, <laughs> whatever color you want. Just blue, crimson, black, all you need in order to make this plackish color. Now, we're gonna attach ourselves to this dark separator. It's coming around, it's underneath, and then right under here as the water starts to fall, it's gonna be casting some shadows. And we go through and we start to rotate down 
and we cover over whatever we don't want to see, right? You're not going to see every piece of water once it's hit the ground. Once it's hit the ground, boy, oh boy, there's a lot of, oh yeah, right in there. Cut it off wherever we want it to be. Now we come in here. Once it hits the ground, though, boom, you got billions of little bits of water that are splashing off. They're coming up everywhere. They're going back over the wave. They're trying to hide everything off in the distance. That's what that water does. Just crazy. Crazy. Come down, smash it, crash it. Then we're going to go back and light it up. And it's going to look like the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Now, underneath our little dark separator, sometimes you can go back and make it a bit darker, but... I suggest just letting it stay dark initially. It's a lot easier to do that way. Now, let's get all this color off of our brush. We don't need the dark color on that fan brush anymore. No siree, Bob. We do not. Now, we're gonna come back in. We're gonna take the same fan brush that we haven't even cleaned yet from doing all of our ocean, doing our clouds, doing our thing, doing the sand, all that stuff. Haven't cleaned it yet, right? We're going to go into some liquid white. Now, let me show you this is what the jar of liquid white looks like. But I don't want to take my brush that's full of color and pop it right into my fresh jar. So before every show, or just, I mean, I, it's always out here sitting. It's a little Petri dish. It's all it is is a lid to one of those old liquid white jars that allows me to come in and grab a bit of liquid white, not caring if I dilute this bit, right? I can always add more liquid white into my little Petri dish. I can't take color out of my liquid white jar once I get it in there, right? So, in order to keep our jars clean and fresh, use a little Petri dish. Now, once you get your liquid white, come over into your white section, right? Grab a little bit of that yellow, too, just a little bit. A little bit more. Ah, oh, there we go. A little bit of that, right? We'll come in here, dabbing it up into our titanium white. Can't just use liquid white, can you? Class, can you just use liquid white? Or do you need the titanium white as well? And you can see what I'm doing. I'm coming in very lightly slapping, slapping, slapping each time, judging. If I want it to be a bit taller, I slap it a bit harder. If I want it to be a bit shorter or smaller, I slap it a bit less. We're riding down on top of these shadows. <laughs> Leaving some of the darkness underneath. About here, it's about a half inch. There, it's about a quarter inch. Here's about a half inch. Not trying to cover up all the darkness, right? Look what happens to our brush, though. It gets all nasty and covered in that, co uh, that other color. So let's rotate this fresh side towards the canvas. And instantly, bang, brighter color. We come back here, we start smacking and tapping and going crazy, right? You can do it upside down. You can turn it this way. You can do it however you want. It can be all over the place. Bow, everywhere. I even got it up here into our clouds. That's how crazy you can be, right? So you need more. Come back in, a little bit brighter. Boom, 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 boom. Literally just slapping it at the canvas because who cares at this point, right? This is just our first round. Hey, a couple little bits. Boom, all you gotta do. Now, let's come in. Wipe that brush on a paper towel, right? Just wiping it off back and forth so it's not so overly loaded with paint again. We're gonna come in with our one inch brush, also dabbing that on a paper towel. You guys should see the beautiful color mess that I have down here on my paper towel. All right, taking the same brush, and I'm gonna come up here very, very lightly. Very light. I'm gonna grab this guy that's actually I'm not. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go back. Aha! See how we just lined him up? So softly. We're not trying to push the color all over the canvas. I don't really want it to move. Just wanna disturb it. Right? We don't need it to, to go anywhere. There's not much room for it to go, right? We just wanna disturb it a little bit. Now we come back for round two, meaning we go back into our liquid white. Loading it up onto our brush. All right, just like that. Actually, let's do a little bit more. Boom. All soaked and saturated onto the brush, okay? Now, we're going to come back. We're going to deposit all that soaked saturation so it's not so overly soaked anymore. And come back in. Grab a bit of our titanium white, right? And then into the liquid white. Kind of mix those guys. You can't just do one or the other. It doesn't work. Now, come up here, let's start to shape this guy a little bit. These are our finished touches. These ones will never be any better looking than they are right here, so you gotta get these ones right. Okay, down here, you can always mush over and, and do your, um, your blending and your other brush and stuff, but these ones that are falling, those are our finished dudes. 
right? But then they come down here, it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Just all, whatever kind of sound effects you can make. It only, it works better with the sound effects. I'm telling you. I, it's not a joke. Like, it's also more fun. The more sound effects you make, the more fun painting will be for you. Okay? So, come over here, wipe that brush off, paper towel again. Dab off our one-inch brush. Five, six, seven times. Get this spit that came off my mouth. And I was like, <laughs> all that stuff. Now, same brush. We come back up in here very lightly, and we're going to skip a lot of area, right? We want not every bit to look exactly the same. So we'll skip, and we jump down here, not getting these guys. These are our finished area. Maybe a couple little, just a little touch down there, right? Little things, they don't all have to be the same. Poof, you got water. But we come in at the last and throw some paint at the canvas, literally. Remember when we use this brush in the very beginning to make our one little teeny tiny thing? It's the only reason we use that brush. Well, we're gonna use it now too. We're gonna come back and this is the only time that we can use liquid white all on its own, right? Get some overly saturated onto the brush, drop it on the side of our palette, just like that, right? And then we come back and we drag the brush through so it bends our bristles back and launches them forward at our watery section. So the more paint that you have on the brush, look at that, the more little splitter splatters that are gonna come off, right? Now, again, the more splatters that we have, the more depth that you're gonna have. If you just stop right now with just a little bit, right? Sure, it looks cool, but you can still see a lot of that color and a lot of our brush marks over here, right? So I like going back, grabbing a little bit more of our liquid white, back over here, dumping it off again, going back at it multiple times, right? The more that you can hide in especially this area with our little splattery bits, the more depth it's going to have because our eyeballs have to look through all these little splatters to finally get to the wave, right? Just really cool. Just so neat. Let's see if I can zoom in for you guys on YouTube just real fast. See that? All those little splatters. You get all that craziness in there. And it helps it make it look more real. Now, what about this guy down here? He looks kind of funky and disconnected. All we got to do, a couple little taps to soften him down and connect him with his little buddies. And then poof, it's all ready to go, right? Just gorgeous, guys. Just fantastic. Now, you do not have to continue on with the tutorial from this moment forward, okay? You can be done, and your water is going to look amazing. But if you wanted to add a bit more details and a bit more stuff, right, we can. First things first, I'm going to sign the painting, get it all ready to go, and then, dude, should we throw a rock in here? Oh, yes, let's do it. Why, why even ask, Josh? Why even ask? Let's do that first. Let's come over here. Since we got this dark mix, and we're going to grab our Meaden Lamp Black. Okay, the only reason that I use this Meaden Lamp Black paint is because it is literally the blackest paint I have ever come across. And it's a little bit le a li more liquidy. It helps it stick to stuff. It's awesome. So we're going to take this mix of the black and our three favorite colors. First thing we're going to do is scrape off wherever we want our little crazy little rock shape to be. All right, so we come up here, scrape it, pull it down, pull all this color, get it out of there, right? All that is very wet, runny paint. That's gonna try to make our dark color brighter. We want our dark color to remain dark. So now we're gonna come in and look at how dark it stays, even over all that white paint, right? All that white, liquidy, wet, runny paint our, our lamp black is staying nice and dark over it, right? And that's my favorite part about that paint is even with all that excess white, you can get it to just be dark as heck. Hey, look at the craziness. Our crazy little rock in there. Now, we'll come back in, grab a bit of our titanium white, the thick titanium white, not the overly liquefied liquid white titanium white, okay? Why do I keep grabbing this green somehow? This green. 
It's like trying to overtake my scene. Here we go, a little bit of red will dull it down. So brown, red, a little touch of our cad yellow. Boom, 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 boom. And it's got that phthalo green, but that was an accident. Just like that, scrape this guy up and let's come off of our rock in different ways. Maybe this guy comes down in the opposite direction because not every rock is gonna be all pulling off in one way. Right? Maybe a little bit more of our brown, come down here towards our sandy area. Little bits always pulling differently. You don't have to do it all the same, right? Now we're gonna get our one inch brush and we're gonna pull out and slide back. And this bottom bit becomes its own shadow of the rock, as you can see. The more that dark color that you pull out, the more shadowy darkness it will become, right? How far do you want your bit of, of uh, rocky shadow to go down there? Kind of that wet glare. You pull down, you slide over, you get that wet glare. Just wicked! Just like that, guys, right? Very cool. Now, this dude... Got a little bit of crashiness on there. Poosh! Very neat. Now I'm going to go back in and just for good measure, chuck a couple little sprays onto our rock and a couple into the sand around him just so he's kind of matched up as everything else. Take a few little bits of stars out into our sky above the clouds. Very cool. And then we're even going to go so far as to add one little bit of brightness. Just pure white. Just in there. Kind of let it do what it's going to do. Just brighten that whole area up. Back with our same brush we've been using for everything. Right, as long as you dab it off on a paper towel, you're not really transferring all that color from everywhere else, you know, to wherever you were taking it. Now, here's my favorite bit. Remember, guys, we got nine minutes before the Glitterwick stream is going to start over on TikTok. I've been so immersed in this painting. I haven't even mentioned it one time. Glitterwicks. They do the most amazing candles you've ever seen. I just got 10 brand new ones. Here's a good guy right here. He's got a very big flame because I didn't trim my wick because I'm a bad boy. You're supposed to trim your wick. But <laughs> I like a, a long wick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, they're awesome candles and they come on right after I do and go live on TikTok and pour orders. You can place your order. You can choose custom colors. You can pick your scent. She's got like 65 different scents. I just got the cedar, the Egyptian one. Uh, hug in a cup, which is like peppermint mocha, coffee, of course. Oh, two coffee ones. And is that last one? Oh, distinguished gentleman. There's one more I think I got too. I can't remember. But they're all friggin' awesome. So go over there and grab yourself some. Glitterwix.com. Now we're gonna come over here with our white. We're gonna scrape up all that liquid white because we don't need it anymore. We don't want the liquidy wet runniness. I want to pull down on this guy, and it's gonna be we're gonna be turning our wave into a mountain almost, right, with our thick paint. So if you've ever taken your, your paint and made a mountain, right, and kind of drug that bit so you get all these little foamy bits, well, in mountains you would call them snowy bits. On waves I call them foamy bits, right, because you can come back in here, right along the edge of our color, right, leaving that dark line, don't cover that dark line. Don't kick your tail if you go in and cover that line. Leave our dark separator in there. We'll start sliding up all little bits of this white, right? Now, especially when we get over here towards us, you can be very thick because we're closer to us. We can see a bit more, right? And then as it starts to fall off of our knife or fall off your brush or whatever, it gets less and less and less as it gets further away, it becomes harder to see. Right? So this guy, I would imagine, a couple bits over here, pull these guys off in a different direction and again, Leaving that dark separation, leave a good space in between them. They don't all have to touch. It's not going to make sense if they're all touching. Bring this guy along down the edge. And remember, you don't have to do this part of the tutorial. You could leave your water looking exactly like it was and go on, right? Sometimes it takes a bit of practice. I'm just going to touch and touch and touch and touch. Just like that. And that little bit of white on the way up. Now, coming off the backside, almost in reverse. Right? Have you ever used your, your palette knife like that? Going in reverse, instead of pulling it down, we're using it and going backwards. Have you ever done it like that? It's freaking kind of hard to do. It's not the easiest thing, because you can leave a whole giant chunk and it doesn't break the same, right? So, don't blame me the first time you try it. Try it, try it in a non, what do they say on, uh, when you're buying a product or like, try it in like a non, 
obvious area. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to try to test it in a not... There's a word for it. Ugh! A non-something area where it's like... Nondescript? No, that doesn't make any sense. Right? You don't need it everywhere. And you want to make it a little crazy because that's what the water is out there. It's just a bunch of craziness, especially out here next to the beach. It's getting curled up and churned and churned and churned every time the waves are coming. This next wave that comes in is going to churn it up even more. Right? So, take your color in there, rocket it back, loading little pieces at a time. You don't have to load your entire knife up full of paint. Little bits, and the more and more and more you go back, the more you can kind of streak up following our little angles that we've done before. Right? Bingo, bango, just like that. Then you can always go back in and soften it with your brush. You don't like it being as thick as it is, you go back in and brush over it, and it turns it back to a softer color. Right, back there like that, over there like that. Get all these cool little details back there. Now we're going to pull out the Paint with Brand liner brush. Just the longest liner brush you've ever seen. And I'm going to dip it into a little bit of my liquid white. Over here, might as well put it in front of our titanium white pile too. All right, we're going to come from the front, go up, back, and then up, back and up, back and up, dragging a couple little bits through the eye of our wave. You don't want to start too soon. You don't want to go straight up like a, like a ramp. Right? We're not trying to be um, evil Knievel and jump off this wave. Right? We just want a couple little streaks, a couple little swipes, then we'll go back in with our knife and get rid of the majority of that detail, right? It's just scraping over it lightly, different places. Bang! It's like that. Get these little things, little disconnected bits as they're streaking up into our wave, right? Very cool. Now, from the very top, we're going to wipe off all that liquid white that we can. And from the very top, right, we get a little of our, our um, midnight black or the mountain mix, whatever, but it's also all that dark color that's already in here. Now, you got to imagine lining back up with one of those guys. So you have to go backwards before you start your way down. Go back, go back, go back. Little baby bits. A little here, a little there. Trying to make a circle, and that will help keep your wave looking more and more like it's rotating, right? Come up here and just tap in these little areas, just where your lines came over the edge, just to make them go away. That's all we're doing. Just make them go away so you can't see where the brush contacted the canvas. And just like that, you got a wicked awesome wave in less than an hour with some rocks and an exploding moon. You guys are cool. You guys are cool. Now, we're gonna have to come up with a title for this one, guys. So start coming up with a name. What are we going to name this guy? And let's see what we got. I'm gonna clean up a few brushes. We're all gonna jump over to Glitterwix in about three minutes. They're gonna be starting their stream at six o'clock. So, Tidal Eclipse of the Heart. I like that. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. You can always as well, and you don't have to do this part during the tutorial, right? but you can take some of our, our thick white, drag it out here, trying not to make it connect in every place. Right? We've got to have some areas where it's not touching. Back in there, just very flat on the knife, a lot of pressure. Right? You can wiggle out a lot of little ripples in our water just with the teeniest little bits of pressure. All right, come up underneath our rock. He's got a couple little bits where it came in and grabbed against him, started to ripple back. Maybe down here, starting to feed its way back towards our little bit of water. But the best part about it is it's a mess. That's, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a literal mess. Connect them in some areas, but not every area. Dang, little bits, little dark areas, little light where you can come up and grab stuff. This guy's a bit too dark. There we go. Little bits of dark. Little bits of light. Streak it back. Every which way you want to go. Now, off of our backside over here, I'm going to start to very lightly, very lightly, just like we do with our mountains, just to soften it a bit. Bring that color back towards its dark separator, but not allowing the two colors to kind of touch. It's not what you want. Off the top of the wave. Back in here. Very, very, very very light, like just grazing, sometimes not even touching it. Just grazing over, but barely touching any bit. And that's all liquidy, wet water, right? It should be transferring onto your brush. Unless you're just touching it so soft that it won't. Drag that guy a little bit further, like a little bit more pressure, and drag up that white, 
right? So it shrinks down that dark separator. Bring it back towards that side. Very soft, though. Not every place has to be exactly the same. Not every bit. Remember, we're all going to head over to Glitterwix any second now when she starts up her stream. So, a little bit more of a thickness just to get rid of that overly brushed area. Especially right down here in the front. This is where we see everything. This is the closest spot to us where we can see literally the entire, every single detail of all the foam because we're right here, right? That's further away. We're literally standing right here. So, very cool little painting, guys. This one turned out amazing. And I'm glad we were able to do it on a, on a YouTube show, like a Friday Night Freestyle. It's been a minute since we've done a wave on a Friday Night Freestyle. I was looking at the... Uh, at the stats, and I was like, oh goodness, it's been a minute, a couple weeks since we've done a Friday Night Freestyle on the, uh, on a wave, so, this one turned out amazing, guys, I love it, you guys love it, I can't wait to see your versions of it, so, can't, uh, send them into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh, alright, that's where I see the majority of you guys' stuff, is when you send it to me on Facebook, so, let's get our space birds out here, Just crazy space bird <laughs> flying away from that explosion, man. So send me your uh, your versions of this painting over on Facebook. I can't wait to see them. You guys have all been an amazing crowd, like usual. You guys are always awesome. And I might be back later on on TikTok. Who knows? Maybe I'll come back for a second show. Normally, you know, I like to sell a painting in order to come back and do another one. Cut into my supplies, but it's okay. It's all right. Maybe we come back and do another one. So, end of tides. I like that. That's a cool one. Total eclipse of the art. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. I have run over my time limit, guys. I am over the limit. But it's been a whole lot of fun with all of you guys. 2 a.m. over in the U.K. Excellent, excellent. Supernova. I like that, too. We can call it Supernova Tides. We'll just mix everybody's everybody's title into one title and call it Supernova Tides. <laughs> Holy crap. That sucker came flying down. Luckily, there was another one behind it, which saved it from uh, falling face first. Goodness gracious. These things are um, <laughs> are very, very, very thin. That was funny. I hope you guys got a good like oh, jo uh, a good laugh out of that. Because that gave me quite the scare. That was a little scary. It fell out of the whole thing. Boom! Easy does it. Easy as pie. Already ruined it. <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. People's comments, man. All right, let's come over here. We're going to sign this guy like this. This one's number 1135. 1135. What we're going to call it Supernova Tides. Just mix everybody's answers all up together. This one was painted on 2-2 two, two of 2024. And we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com in order to find all sorts of neat things. Paintwithjosh.com. Now, spin this guy back around. Over here. Over there. Put him right out on the edge so we can see his whole business. And then just remember, Josh, that it's out on the edge. For goodness sake. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to get out of here. We'll say goodbye to everybody over on YouTube, over on Facebook. And um, let's see. It's going to be fantastic. So... All right, guys. A couple little tip taps, chip chaps. All right. Well, love this one. I can't wait to see your versions of it, guys. So please send it in to me over on uh, facebook.com slash paint with Josh. And until I see you guys again, so take care. Have the rest of a good day. Bye-bye. Just crazy. This is a good show.